This is your main man, Tech Supreme, back with another episode of Rent Free with Tech Supreme. It's been a while. It's been about a little bit over a month since I recorded my last episode, and I have to apologize for that. Uh, that's pretty whack on my part. Um, but we know we're back now, and we're going to keep it moving. So welcome back to another episode. Hopefully the, this finds you well. Everything's been going good with you. I am doing this... Um, this is uh what Tuesday morning. I have a dentist appointment in like two hours. Uh, I had a doctor's appointment two weeks ago. Just you know, I like to give my little health updates. So you know, just making sure I'm being mindful of my health and my wealth. You know what I mean? So uh, everything's checking out good, which is a good thing. Uh, me and the wife about to go on vacation in a couple weeks. So super excited about that. And um, you know, just uh living every day. You know, just working and trying to blow up these businesses, trying to do right with business and stuff like that. That's pretty much all I've been going on. Um, I joined this group called the, uh, I went, you know, I was with a group called Team Epic Gaming uh, with DJ Epic. He asked me to be a part of it, even though I don't stream like I used to. Uh, so I do appreciate, appreciate that. Let me see if I can get centered. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Um, but uh, that spawned uh, activation with the St. Louis Battlehawks through Breach, uh, which is a company started by Ronnie Notch and his wife, Tiffany Notch. Um, super cool, amazing couple. And, um, you know, we kind of decided to join forces and make uh, it be a part of this thing called Breach League, which, you know, it's um, it's a little bit undefined for me. I know it's going to be a, it's going to have a lot to do with gaming and applications. Um, I'm sorry, activations. Um, so I'm just kind of riding it and see where it goes. I mean, everyone I respect majorly on a, on a personal level. So I'm super excited to be teaming up with Epic and Ronnie and Tiffany and Noah and my, my one of my oldest friends, Melanie. Um, to be part of this. So I'm super excited just to, you know, see where we go with it. And there's been a lot of discussions on things going on. So it's just the future is looking really bright for that. So I'm super excited. Um, but yeah, we're doing this. So we're basically with the activation with the Battle Hawks, we were playing, we set up a three TVs with three Xboxes and we had Madden on each TV, Madden 23. And we just basically, basically made a gaming zone um, on an upper level on like a, so the second level of the, the um, I was going to say the, the Trans World Dome, I'm aging myself. Side note, that was literally my first job was at the Transworld Dome when the St. Louis Rams were in St. Louis. I was working the concession stand. Um, but yeah, we had on the like on like this like sweet kind of cafeteria area with high point on one end, a couple bars in the middle, and then you had us as this activation where people just come by, kids and adults, young adults would play Madden. Um, and it was really fun. Um that even we even uh one one, I think it was a Friday. Uh, so like the day before a Saturday game, we went down there for the Boys and Girls Club of America and the Big Brothers Big Sisters, um, and we uh, played Madden with the kids and the players played with the kids. So that was really cool to see, you know, the uh, the players interacting with the kids, and it was a super dope. So shout out to Team Epic Gaming, which is now Breach League, and shout out to Breach, uh, it's super dope. Now everyone, if you know me, you know I'm also a part of the Neighborhood Association in my neighborhood as a young black man. I feel like it's important to be involved. I just something that just came up part kind of like last early last year. Uh, I wanted to, I wanted to move. I I was kind of done with the city with the crime and things like that. And we're gonna talk about crime in St. Louis in a little bit. But I was I was kind of done, and I decided that since we're not gonna be able to move right because we we just bought this house and my wife loves the neighborhood and she loves being in the city because she lived in the county all her life. I lived in the cities all my life, so we kind of have like the juxtaposition. Um, but. So we decided, like, I decided in my head, like, I knew, like, okay, like, the desire to leave is just a, a flight type of reaction to, like, negative things happening. So uh, I decided that if I'm going to stay, then I have to be involved. So I started coming around uh, the safety, the, the, neighborhoods, uh, um, the neighborhood meetings, association meetings, and um, the president took a liking to me, and he's super cool. He's no longer the president. Um, the new president is also super cool, but he was super cool, and he just... He just, for some reason, he was like, I want you to be part of this. Like, he was like, I need you to be part of this. So uh, that was super dope. So that, I was, started off as the event, a part of the events committee, but I really didn't, like, I felt more like a, not not a thing for me, right? So I was able to still lend my help with designing stuff for the, the events committee um, and uh, ended up taking over the social media and then ended up not really having a position, but just kind of doing all the graphics for everything. 
and then that kind of went to be becoming to the secretary which i basically i take notes at meetings and now i'm the chair of the safety committee uh so obviously if you know me you know i'm passionate about like crime prevention and awareness and self-protection and all of these things so this is right up my alley we've had uh this is our third month and we've been going really well i do not like how it feels like we have meetings and then not too much happens in between meetings so i do want to increase that but that's like more of a personal thing but um i'm super excited about the way the safety committee is going uh we have a lot of dedicated people who care about the neighborhood who want to see the neighborhood uh improve and be the best that it can be so uh super excited about that going on um it's our cap is we're in a transitional period because we need to grow but i don't want to grow too soon i only have one machine so um selling hats for me i like selling my hats doing bulk orders is cool but for me the brand is what's driving me right not being an embroiderer but like to have a a line of gear so like so selling hats to me is a thrill i get actually like when i sell a hat i kind of get like an endorphin rush almost because it's like your art on someone else's clothes and like someone else's like gear that they're wearing so like i'll go out and see someone who i may or may not know or like i've seen before wearing one of my hats and it's, be, it's just so dope such a dope feeling um so but we're still going to keep doing all the things because uh we need all the all the revenue streams coming in so i also love doing the hats where like i had a say in in the hat and now like the hats being sold in this jack nolan's for instance and i just i just love how that looks so i i, I love doing the hats um obviously this year we're going to we're going to do some some clothes as well uh but you know all in due time uh so that's kind of my update basically not not too much you know not too much going on uh so the first topic that i do want to talk about is your boy john ja morant now he has a history of basically wanting to be this uber thug right which is weird because he basically came up from a really nice place but he's enamored by well he's first of all he's young with a lot of money so that's already off top is going to be a thing, right? Where he's going to do dumb shit. Um, you hope he doesn't, but, and a lot of people don't, but he's definitely in the bag of doing dumb shit. So, um, yeah, he's just flashing guns. And like, that, if you're in the NBA, you can't do that. Like, you just can't do that. So like, he's going to be suspended indefinitely from the team. But like, obviously they're going to, it's off season. They just lost a couple weeks ago in the playoffs to the Lakers. You know, Dylan Brooks is he's gonna be playing in China. I'm sure of that. Um, John Morant, man, he just he had bad people around him, man, including his mom, no offense, you know, no shade. But like I, I just heard the story about how uh his mom got into it with a dude in the mall who was working at a shoe store. So she calls up Ja and Ja comes down there with nine people. Uh there's a there's an incident at a, a kid's game where the mom gets into someone and she calls Ja and he comes in playing a forcer. So all this and he's floating through Memphis kind of as a almost like a god almost it's given him some it's giving him a, a complex and it's obviously not going to end well for him because you can't play in that game like that you can't play in the nba and that and you can't play in the streets like that either like if you don't if you're not about that life then the streets are going to eat you up i i, I kind of feel like you know hopefully like someone gets in there real soon to kind of like bring him in and calm him the fuck down you, we don't know if that's going to happen or not but he's wilding out right now and this brings me off to a, a, a another point. I wanted to transition into NBA playoffs, but I, I just want to say this, and I'll get back to this later on in the podcast, that uh, also when you see a black person with a gun, and this is not saying John Morant, because John Morant, you can have a gun and you can flash your gun. Obviously, when black people have a gun, people are treated differently for some reason. It's more fear-based. Like, it's, it's, it's completely racist. Um, but, like, you also, like, you can't, like you can't have a job with a corporation and then expect them to be okay with you flashing your gun like that's just not how working for someone works right like there is a code of conduct he's obviously not following this code of conduct at all um but like also we have to stop villainizing if it's going to be legal for some right where you see the white people white family with their guns uh on the christmas card and then you see a black family or with the gun you're like oh look at like he's raising these stuff like come on man like seriously like let's let's make it even right that's all like all we want is equality right so like there's a big big thing on the news a couple weeks ago or last weekend 
where these kids were coming out of this loft downtown with guns. These, they put them on the news, on every news channel. No crime was committed. Uh, they didn't do anything wrong in that moment. So there's no suspicion. The only reason they put them on there because they're young, black, and they have guns downtown. It's also like 5.30 in the morning, like 6.30 in the morning, like, like no one's even out there. So like, it was just super racist. And like, so let's, let's not, it's okay to be black and have guns. Get used to seeing black people with guns. If you want everyone, if it's legal for everyone to have guns, it's legal for every human American to have guns. Don't be mad when you see a black person with a gun. I have a gun. I'm not a criminal. That's that. It's so it's so simple, but you know, society and racism got to make it hard. Uh, let's just move forward to something more positive: the NBA playoffs. And I say positive. Take that with a, a grain of salt. Uh, in one night, <laughs> both of my teams. And I just go to say Warriors and the New York Knicks lost their game seven. Same night. Well, I'm not sure that the Knicks didn't even go to the seven games, um, but they definitely, they might have actually. But we definitely lost in the same night and it was tough. Uh, so Steph Curry, hell of, a, hell of a player, you know, one of the best shooters that I've ever seen. I think everything with that team is weird to say the least, right? Andrew Wiggins doesn't show up and he's supposed to be a star. Uh, Jordan Poole is trash. Get rid of him. He's obviously toxic to the, to the team. Uh, his reactions, a lot on the sidelines were like really trashy. So I'm not really a big fan of, of Jordan Poole at this point. Uh, Steph, Clay, and Dre, they got a, a good chemistry. He's got to get the right pieces around them. Obviously, if Andrew, if Wiggins doesn't show up, he doesn't show up, right? Like, if the Golden State Warriors play like shit, they're going to lose. Like, they like, if the, 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 the Clay, Steph, and Dre, they're going to do what they're going to do. It's the other people that, should, that need to be involved. Wiggins should not be silent during the playoffs. Um, Poole, I don't know what that was, man. That was, it, his, his energy was crazy. It's hard to explain. And the Knicks, the Knicks, I'm just happy the Knicks got this far. As a, as a New York Knicks fan, I am happy the Knicks got this far. I am proud of them no matter, no matter how it ended. Um, Jalen Brunson is him. RJ Barrett is dope. I, I've always liked Barrett since Duke, and everyone was looking at Zion flying, Duncan, and stuff like that. But this guy was putting up 40. Like, like he was a scorer. Like, you know, he was doing his thing. So I, I, I'm happy with the Knicks. Um, Randall, obviously, he's having some super hardcore body issues. Even in between him coming off the bench, they have huge bags of ice on his knees. So hopefully he can get healthy, and they can get a couple other pieces around them. I... I Josh Hart played so bad, I thought he was paid off. I thought the man was paid off. He played so poorly. Every time he came into the game, it was such a clusterfuck of mistakes on his part. I thought that he was paid off. Like, there's no way. In the same way that if you looked at Game 7, James Harden, now maybe maybe I'm being a little harsh, right? Maybe he just, mm, just can't do the pressure. But it looked like James Harden was paid off too. Like, he played astronomically bad for someone who is a veteran superstar he played like he's never ever been in the nba game before and this is game seven game team on the line like the the, the series the, the season's on the line so that was crazy to me i i thought, I thought that was interesting um but yeah the nba players have been crazy so right now we got lakers and nuggets and then we have um miami and boston uh obviously i kind of want austin to do well because jason tatum is from st louis I used to go to church with his mother, Brandy. Uh, so that's just, that's just super dope to see that this kid is just like transcended and like he is like superstar level, 51 points in game seven uh, against the 76ers. It's, I, I kind of want him to win. But also, I, I'm torn. I don't have, like, my teams are out. So like, I also want to see Miami get, get far because Jimmy Buckets is a beast and he's an eight seed. So an eight seed getting all the way to the finals would be insane. And then I like at a um, Bam out of bio. I like, um, I don't like Kyle Lowry for some reason. Like, I've never really been a big Kyle Lowry fan. Um, but I, I just, I kind of, I'm excited. Now, the one team I don't care about at all is the Nuggets. And that's who I think can possibly win the whole thing. If Murray plays well, he stays healthy. And Jokic plays how Jokic has been playing. Um, and then you have, like, uh, Aaron Gordon, out of, uh, you know, from the Orlando days. He's there now and he's balling. I don't think he can, I think he got the Blake, uh, Griffin thing going where he's not jumping like he used to, but like he's still like taking over games, doing doing his thing. So, I I want 
I'm torn too because also I want LeBron. I really don't care. I'm just excited to be a basketball fan right now. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just super excited just to watch the game of basketball in its in its purity and and just enjoy what what they're doing on the on the court. So NBA playoffs have been going up. It's been a great uh, season. My prediction is Nuggets versus Celtics, which would be weird. Or but uh, you know if we if we if, okay if we're saying that the NBA and sports is scripted, right? If we're gonna say that, and people can make that argument. I'm going to have to say that the, the final, if it's scripted, if it is scripted on record, it's going to be Lakers versus Celtics. That's it, right? This is a NBA rivalry dating back to way before any of us were born. That's that's what, if it's scripted, if it's scripted, that's what's going to happen. If it's not, it's probably going to be Nuggets Celtics, right? But that's my that's my prediction. You heard it here first. Uh, <laughs> all right, so moving on. Um, crime in St. Louis is going crazy right now. Um, a bunch of idiots are running around the streets and we're all being terrorized, but yet the white people in the city are blaming the black people. So like, it's like, what, what can we do? We're all getting terrorized. This ain't enjoyable for any of us, of us citizens who, who don't partake in these proclivities. And, but all of a sudden it's all of off. It's all awful. Like, <laughs> like it's, you know, it's and then they blame Kim Kim Gardner, and now she's out, and they're still blaming her. And then if it's not her, they're gonna blame Sarah Jones, which is the mayor, and she's black. And it's just, it's just, I'm fed up with all of it. That's why I'm the head, head of the safety committee because I want to do something about all this shit. Um, I'm not just gonna sit on my hands. Uh, but crime is going, crime, crime's going crazy. Like, admittedly, like people are shooting, people are driving reckless, people are robbing, strong arm robberies. They doing, they they doing this. Last summer they was robbing gun stores, and this summer they're using the guns. I don't know what's going on. This shit is crazy. Um, keep your head on the swivel. Um, it's funny because in St. Louis they they've made it an issue, uh, 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 not an issue, but they made they they made it a point to blame Kim Gardner, which is the circuit attorney, the the, the former circuit attorney. She just resigned a couple weeks ago, um, and they didn't blame anyone else. They didn't blame the police. They didn't blame anyone else. And what happened with Kim was she went in there and she's like, oh, we're going to do police reform. And the police were like, fuck you, watch this. And then like, that was it. Like it was a, it was them versus Kim the entire time. And uh, it fell apart. The whole system fell apart. The whole system was already falling apart. And it just, it just made it worse. But one side made it to the, all the white people was like, get her, <laughs> you know, like yeah, get the black girl. So it, to me, it was a witch hunt from jump. Um, she definitely resigned under pressure and we still have crime. So like, what do we, what did we solve? Like you got the black woman out of there. Now what? Like I want to, I want to see that same energy when in, then the governor, uh, Mike Parsons appoints this white person. Cause you know, he will, it's going to be a white male. Um, we'll, we'll see, we'll see the energy then. Right. We're like, and they're not going to keep the same energy. They're not going to give a shit. They just had a, the problem with, with Kim cause of a lot, you know, cause of the obvious. Um, now did she fuck up? Absolutely. Yeah, like you have to be on your P's and Q's when you're in that position. You have to, like, you know, as a young black person, you're told you have to work 10 times harder than your fellow white friends. And it's true. So when she's in that position, she can't fuck up. And she was fucking up left and right. Like there was just some missteps everywhere you fucking turn. So not only that, but like you waged war against the police and you already have, you know, like you already, they already hate you because you're black. And it just, and now you're not efficient. It's just, it was downhill. And there's no way, there's no saving it. You have to, you have to leave. You have to resign. It is what it is. It's unfortunate. And uh, well, the city is worse off for it. Um, but it's, it's worse off because we need everyone to address the real issues. And the real issues is crime. Like the real issues is, is underfunded neighborhoods, crime, this whole like years of building up the, these these mind, site, mind states. Now, I like if you look at news from different cities and you wonder, you start seeing like, this is happening here. These people are here and these people are here. Well, how is it that these people from all these different places are doing the same exact things, right? And the same exact, they're almost the same exact person in a sense of like, they think the same and they move the same and they react the same and they do things the same and they, they, they do all these things and it's all systemic. It's all... It's all a part of the plan. It's all a part of the structure that we're in. Like, they, like the, the system is created for these people to, to navigate the world in this way, and then these people to navigate this way, and these people navigate this way, 
and the people up here who are navigating they want everyone beneath them to navigate lower like that's just how it is and like so i always notice this when i'm looking at news from different cities how similar all the crimes are and all the on all the and, and like the like even even to like the school like school shooting it's all a part of a system to me and i know it sounds like conspiracy theory shit but like there's this is not natural that people are like this so like it's a culture. It was the way they like they were like this certain sect of people are like re- like grew up and raised in these certain similar conditions that create this similar thing. And who are creating conditions, right? Like who are creating the structure? So if because it basically if if these if everyone had the same opportunities, it wouldn't be like this. Obviously, Ob- I mean it's, ob- it's obvious. It's obvious. I'm moving on. Um. Me and my wife had a discussion and I said, told her that every single day, every single day I'm reminded that I'm black in a negative way. And I have to seek out positive reinforcements for it. But if I just on default go through the day, I'm going to see racism at some point in the day. I'm going to, I'm going to come across it. It's going to be loud and clear. Um, or like, basically that's it. Like, I'm going to find racism no matter what I do. Um, so when I first started thinking, like, like when I first said that, I went out and, I, and I'm not going to, I was first, I was going to like post every time I did see something that reminded me I'm black in a negative way. Um, but then I just like decided not to, and I'll just keep it like something simple, like in my head and sure as shit every single day, man. And the, the only way to, to kind of lessen it is to just stay off the internet. Um, but then again, like in life, you will see, you will get reminders in life. Those, I feel like those are a little bit more spread out. Um, it makes me, like, makes me want to dream. It makes me want to dream of living somewhere else. Uh, me and my wife, we vacation, uh, a few times every year. And, um, I've had the opportunity to go to different countries in which the predominant people are people of color. And I tell you, man, it's, it, it hit different. It hit, it hit diffy. Like I feel completely different when I'm in a, con- a country in which I look like the the normal person. I even feel different in Mexico, just because it's like, I mean, I feel like a little like they they kind of depending on like what side of Mexico you're in, like it's a little bit you know you know sketchy. But I feel I feel I feel less I feel less I don't know ostracized. I don't know if that's the right word, but eventually I don't want to I don't want to live I don't want to like I don't want to die in St. Louis. So like I want to retire, I guess I, I I'm self-employed, so like retirement is kind of like not a thing, but like I want to live my my twilight years, I believe they call it, in a country that I I look like the normal, like I look normal, I look like the regular default. Um, my favorite place so far has been Aruba. I felt really at home there, like I felt comfortable, and um, Haiti, which was the the bartender at this uh. This little like outside cafe, this Argentinian cafe out uh, out there. The last day, the, like one of the last days we were there, she was like, you know, you know, when when I saw you talking to me, it's like I wanted to cry because you look so much like my brother, and that that was amazing to me. Um, but like just to have that like look, like I don't know, you you would understand if you were white because you have it here, but like black people really don't have that here. Um, and it's not no say to America. I'm American. This is what I rock with. This is what I where I've been born into. It is what it is, but uh, I do want to live outside of the country. So I do watch videos a lot on YouTube of other people living in other countries just to get the vibe of it. And I've been lately addicted to like these YouTubers who are like these black people who are just like just living through other in other countries, but they're doing it differently. Like how like they're not doing like the resort shit, like they're doing like the real street shit, which is kind of wild to me. I don't know if I could do all that. I don't know if I'm comfortable with that, but I still think it's pretty it's pretty cool. Um. And I think I'm going to end the episode again. It's been a month and I'm sorry. I'm going to try to stay more consistent. Uh, just bear with me, rock with me. Thank you for listening. If you like the podcast, share the podcast. If you, um, if you share it, I appreciate it. Let me know. And, uh, just stay locked in. Cause we're going to keep on creating content in 2023 and 2000 and beyond. So, uh, thank you for listening to this episode of rent free. This is episode 30. We've made it to episode 30. We're going to keep it moving next week. It'll be episode 31. And I will see you guys on the next time. Break free. Break free. Break free. Listen, you're free.
free.